Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm your instructor, Jim Pytel, and today's topic of discussion is electrically controlled systems. Our objective today is to take an introductory look at electrically controlled systems and discuss the advantages, applications, and characteristics of such systems. The Big Bad Tech channel is about power. When I use the term power, I am speaking of not only the time rate expenditure or production of energy, and the metaphorical extension of a person skilled in the contents contained in the playlists as having the ability to control and influence their own professional path, but also the ability to control a system, be it a factory, a wind turbine, or a robot to do what you tell it to do when you want it done. Most often, electrical energy is converted to another form at the point of use. A motor converts electrical energy into rotational mechanical motion. This motor could be used to move a heavy load or propel a car at a speed and distance an unaided human would be incapable of achieving. A battery charger converts electrical energy into chemical energy. This stored chemical energy can be withdrawn from the battery as electricity in a remote location. Electrically driven pumps can pressurize fluid, and this pressurized fluid can be used to lift a massive object and keep it lifted until such time it becomes necessary to lower it safely to the ground. Electric heaters can heat water for domestic and industrial use, and electricity can keep the interior of homes and factories comfortable and well-lit in all seasons. Industrial applications of electricity are used to assist workers with physical labor and free them from monotonous, physically demanding, or dangerous work. This being said, motors, pumps, hydraulic cylinders, heaters, turbines, and other machines are not thinking machines. They are as self-aware as a hammer, a screwdriver, or a sharpened piece of flint. It is for this reason electricity in its direct form is used to perform sensory and logical functions for automated industrial control processes, communication, and information technology. Data is sent, received, processed, and stored using electrical signals. Switches and sensors form the eyes and ears of automated industrial processes, and hardwired relay-based ladder logic, or the programmed instruction sets written inside ruggedized computers called PLCs or programmable logic controllers, make decisions based on these incoming signals and issue outputs to devices like solenoid-actuated directional control valves or contactors. Automated industrial control systems increase output, quality, efficiency, and safety in addition to providing repeated precision and greater accuracy. It is this aspect of electricity in its direct form that is used to control, as the name implies, an electrically controlled system. At its most basic level, electrically controlled systems are commonly used to start and stop the movement of actuators. An actuator is a device that takes one form of energy and converts it into mechanical movement. Actuators can be differentiated by the form of input energy and the form of mechanical movement they produce. Input could be electrical, hydraulic, pneumatic, thermal, chemical, etc. The mechanical output could be linear, rotational, or oscillation, which is a form of partial rotation. An electric motor is an example of an actuator that converts electrical input into rotational mechanical output. A solenoid is an example of an actuator that converts electrical input into linear mechanical output. A hydraulic cylinder is an example of an actuator that converts hydraulic input into linear mechanical output. Pneumatic cylinders are an example of linear pneumatic actuators and so on. Keep in mind that additional mechanical linkages can modify this initiating motion and translate it to more usable forms. For example, a rotating electrical motor can drive a conveyor belt in a straight line, and a hydraulic cylinder with a pivoting trunnion or clevis mount can tip or tilt an attached load. Numerous examples of actuators exist, and despite their differences of input energy or form of mechanical movement, they can all be electrically controlled. A magnetic contactor can start or stop a motor, and a solenoid-operated directional control valve can stop or start a hydraulic cylinder. In addition to starting and stopping actuators, electrically controlled systems can change direction and modify operating characteristics of actuators. 
such as varying the rotational speed and torque of an electric motor, than varying the extension or retraction force or speed of a hydraulic cylinder. Advanced electrically controlled systems can also perform timing, counting, sequencing, comparison, computational, data processing, and communication functions, and more. On a very basic level, switches and sensors can be viewed as the inputs to an electrically controlled system. These are the eyes and ears of an electrically controlled system. If the eyes are blind or disconnected from the brain or pointed in the wrong direction, then the brain won't react to it. Actuators like motors and hydraulic cylinders are the primary outputs of an electrically controlled system. They are in effect the hands and feet of a system, being that portion that does the actual lifting, lowering, moving, punching, pushing, or pulling. The actuators, however, only move at the request of the electrically controlled system. A contactor starts or stops a motor. A solenoid-operated valve extends or retracts a hydraulic cylinder. If the motor is disconnected from the contactor or the system doesn't close the contactor, the motor won't start. If the cylinder doesn't have fluid supply or the solenoid-operated valve doesn't shift, the cylinder won't extend or retract. Hardwired connections or programmed instructions internal to the electrically controlled system are the brains of an electrically controlled system. The brain makes the decision to start, stop, or change the direction of an actuator. If the brain receives wrong input, it will act appropriately on falsified data. If the brain is wired incorrectly, it will act in an unintended manner. If the outputs are disconnected, the brain will issue orders, but none of the actuators will obey. With this brief diversion, I've already prepared you to troubleshoot an electrically controlled system. Where is the problem? The input, the output, or the brain? At its most fundamental level, troubleshooting an electrically controlled system is the determination in which realm the problem exists. That's ultimately what troubleshooting is. It's the successive bracketing down and down into a smaller and smaller target area until the problem is found and rectified. Good troubleshooters do this in an efficient and systematic method, and most importantly, get it right the first time. Don't look for your lost puppy in the mountains if you lost him at the city park. He's most likely befriended a charming street person or a teenage runaway that expects a stiff reward for his return. We'll return to discuss troubleshooting an electrically controlled system in greater detail before we close up shop. One of the most fundamental characteristics of an electrically controlled system is the differentiation between the control signals and what is being controlled. The control signals are typically low voltage, low current, low power signals and are entirely separate and electrically isolated from that aspect being controlled, whether it is hydraulic, pneumatic, or high voltage, high current, high power electricity. The control signal is often called a pilot signal. The power input is often called primary input, and you'll hear me use these terms interchangeably. The pilot is not the primary. The primary is not the pilot. The pilot is in charge of the primary, and the primary only acts at the request of the pilot. It is for this reason I typically initiate discussions about electrically controlled systems using an electrically controlled hydraulic system as an initial example. Even those with no requisite knowledge of hydraulics can differentiate between the dual aspects of this system. It is readily evident that the hydraulic system is the power or primary portion of the system, being that portion of the system that does the actual lifting, pushing, pulling, or punching, and it is being controlled by a low voltage control or pilot signal that merely tells the hydraulic components when to shift valve positions. There is a clear distinction not only between the pilot and primary function, but also pilot and primary form. Hydraulic components conduct hydraulic power but only do so at the request of the electrical pilot signal. Consider this simple single acting cylinder and a solenoid operated two position three way directional control valve. In its de energized state, the spring offset ensures that the directional control valve 
is dumping to tank and the cylinder is retracted by the spring. The solenoid operated valve simply moves the valve into a new position when the solenoid is energized. When a low voltage electrical control signal is sent to the solenoid, the valve shifts to the straight through position and pressurized flow enters the cap end of the cylinder and the cylinder extends. It is very obvious and very clear that the low voltage control or pilot signal told the solenoid operated directional control valve to move to a new position and conduct primary hydraulic power to the actuator. How different is this application from an electrically controlled motor? Consider an industrial motor that requires 480 volts three-phase AC to operate, however, does so only at the request of a programmable logic controller, a PLC, basically a form of ruggedized computer that operates at 24 volts DC. The principal point of interaction between the control or pilot and the power or primary signals for this type of system is a contactor. A contactor is akin to a solenoid operated directional control valve in an electrically controlled hydraulic system. In its de-energized state, the contactor is in its open condition. When the coil of the contactor is energized by the low voltage pilot signal, the contactor closes the electrically isolated primary electrical power switches. There is a very clear distinction between the different flavors and magnitudes of pilot and primary electricity despite their superficially similar labels. It is very obvious and very clear that the low voltage control or pilot signal told the magnetic contactor to move to a new position and conduct primary electrical power to the actuator. Let's ignore the overloads in series with the primary contacts for now. We'll discuss overloads when we discuss motor starters and circuit protection devices. As self-evident and clear the distinction and separation of pilot and primary is in an electrically controlled hydraulic system, so too must be the distinction and separation of pilot and primary in an electrically controlled motor system. The pilot signal is low voltage, low current, low power electricity, entirely separate and electrically isolated from the high voltage, high current, high power primary input and must always remain so. The only interaction between the pilot and primary electrical signal is via magnetic or mechanical means. They are electrically isolated for a reason, and the primary reason is safety. Pilot signals for modern electrically controlled systems are ordinarily 120 volts AC, 24 volts AC, or 24 volts DC as representative examples, with a notable progressive movement favoring 24 volts DC. It is plainly evident that these levels of electricity are not nearly as dangerous as high voltage electricity used to deliver power to an industrial motor or nearly as dirty as oil-based pilot signals for a hydraulic system. That's the point. The customary use of low voltage, low current, low power electrical pilot signals offer a degree of ease, safety, and isolation for operators and technicians assigned to install, maintain, troubleshoot, upgrade, and repair electrically controlled systems. Again, the control or pilot signal is low voltage, low current, low power electricity, entirely separate and electrically isolated from the power or primary signal. The primary or power input to a system could be high voltage, high current, high power electricity, or hydraulic or pneumatic power. The primary signal is governed by the pilot and only acts at its request. The separation of the pilot and primary aspects of an electrically controlled system offer a degree of ease, safety, and isolation.